Good, yes, good morning and welcome to church. We are in the year where we unask. unask, and today we are going to talk about tongues of fire. Everybody say tongues of fire, tongues of fire, and chocolate milk too, because like it's it's closely related. Tongues of fire, and chocolate milk. You'll see all that. Okay. Yes. I just want to remind everybody that every Wednesday we meet to go. Up. Yes, we do, and. Our next fasting is going to be Wednesday, April the 24th, almost here. So get ready for the power and anointing. You know, I have made now a habit of going to the Lord in special prayer and fasting from Tuesdays to Wednesdays. I'm like, I'm just going to do it every week. And it's a powerful time with the Lord. So I encourage everybody to practice prayer and fasting. Our next youth day is going to be Saturday, April the 27th. And as always, we're going to have a lot of fun with board games. Make sure you are inviting a friend. Yes. And registration is now open. There are extra flyers there. Invite a friend. And as I always like to say, make sure your friends are telling an adult, because if they're not telling an adult, then we're in trouble. I guess that they actually spend the day inviting a few people to camp. So I hope that you guys will do the same. Yes. Yeah? It takes all of us. And now we're going to call Danny, and he's going to lead us in scripture memorization for this day. Thank you, Danny. Go ahead. And whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is in the Okay. Oh. For the Lord is the Spirit, and whenever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that very mood have seen the glory of the Lord. Yes, the glory of the Lord. Also, the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. Yes. All together? But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the Lord is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that day removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. Yes, Danny. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Praise the Lord. That is a wonderful thing, okay? And so now let's just raise a word of prayer to the Lord and dedicate this service to Him. Lord, thank you so much for your amazing word that reminds us that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Father, I pray freedom over every person in this room. Freedom from fear. Freedom from apathy, freedom from timidity, freedom, Father, from the fear that sometimes takes us when we think about our problems and our challenges. Father, give us freedom this morning. Give us freedom to pray, freedom to worship you, freedom to trust you, freedom to rejoice in you, freedom to laugh, freedom to to, to be reverent, but also to have fun as we enjoy your beautiful presence. We are saved. We are redeemed. We are on our way to heaven. And we've been given the honor and the privilege to be called not only your children, but your servants. Thank you for the honor. Thank you for the privilege. Thank you that you say your word and when there are two or more gathered in your name, there you are in their midst. We believe your word, and we know that you never fall short, Father. You always show up. Your Holy Spirit moves in the midst of our worship, and we are anticipating great things from you today, Lord Jesus. Father, bless 
our brothers and sisters that are joining us long distance, whether it's today or, or a month later or a year later, Father, we pray for the blessing and the power of your Holy Spirit to be upon them. We pray that your word, which is like a two-edged sword, will come through and will impact every person watching on distance or watching in this room. Father, help us to not just be as spectators, but to actually enjoy and participate in our rational service, which is our worship to you. We pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's praise our Lord.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.
us freedom. Raise it up, church. Come on. You have given us. You have given us. You have given us freedom. Oh, you have given us. You have given us. You have given us freedom. But for that, I do say, you have given us. You have given us. You have given us freedom. I do great for church. You have given us. You have given us. You got me Thank you, Father. There's nothing I can do that even comes close to 
Right here, this is your home. 
Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the anointing and the power that raised Jesus from the dead that is now inside of us. We welcome you one more time among us, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, beautiful God that we love. Thank you, Yahweh. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's hard. It's hard to teach to be a teacher of the word and a worshiper at the same time. <laughs> Cause all I wanna do is give praise to you. Yes, that's all I wanna do. Let's go to the Word of God. Acts chapter two. Tongues of fire. Tongues of fire and chocolate milk. Mm -hmm. Who here likes chocolate milk? Yes, I love chocolate. I love me some chocolate milk. Yes, I know you do. That's why I'm gonna use you for an illustration. We have to wait a bit. All right, Jace is a little too anxious about the illustration. All right, let's go to Acts chapter two. We're gonna start on verse one. We're gonna cover 13 verses today. Tongues of fire. This is when the Holy Spirit shows up in power. Now we know the Holy Spirit already showed up. How do we know the Holy Spirit already showed up? Because we know that when the disciples were behind closed doors, because they were afraid Jesus had died. After three days, Jesus gets up again. They're locked in a room, and the Bible says that Jesus knocks the door. Is that what happened? Did Jesus knock the door and say, open? Is that what Jesus did? Everybody say, no! No, no, no not like that. We too no! 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 Yeah. We're like, no! One, two, three. No. Life is hard, guys, when you come to church have fun with me. So, no, that's not what Jesus did. The Bible says that he just like went through their walls, because now he had a glorified body. He just appeared to them. In the middle of them, he breathed on them and he said, Receive what? Receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus had told his disciples, if I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. Jesus left physically, and the Holy Spirit now abiding in Jesus, the man, because the Bible says that this is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, is the power of the Holy Spirit. But today, the Lord had promised a special outpouring, a special visitation of the Holy Spirit. And that is what we're going to read about today. All right. Acts chapter 4, chapter 2, sorry, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, by the way, Pentecost means 50 days after. So 50 days after Passover. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, everybody say suddenly. Suddenly. A sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were seen. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. You know why? Because it was Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover, so they were Jewish from all, everywhere. When they heard this sound, there was a sound. A crowd came together in bewilderment because each of them heard their own language being spoken. So we know there were more than Jewish people because there were people from all over the nations. They spoke different languages. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, 
Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya and near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Because in the in in the the people of God, there were people that would convert to the God of the Jewish people. Credence and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. The promise of a father, like the violent wind. Peter, in the next chapters that we're going to study, he's going to tell these people a lot about this promise. But it is important to know that the Bible says that when the Holy Spirit visited that group, first and foremost, they were, where were they? Anybody remember? Where were they? They were in a what? We're going up to the high places. They were in the upper room. They were going in, a, they were in, a, in an upper room. And they were together. And what were they doing? They were doing what? Praying. Pray. And they were praying like once in a while? Constantly, all the time. Remember, we spoke about that. So as they're doing that, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit comes in like a violent wind. Now in the Bible, wind is synonym of God's power, divine intervention, and wind is very, very often referred to as the Holy Spirit. The wind symbolizes change, unseen forces at work. And if you guys remember, when Nicodemus came to the Lord at night, and Jesus said, you have to be born again. And Nicodemus is like, how can I be born again? I'm old, I cannot go back into my mother's womb. And Jesus used an example, and he says, do you know where the wind comes from? No, but you can feel it, and you know it's real. So this is what was happening. This is what was happening to the disciples. Now, if you remember, Jesus had told them to what? Stop. Wait, stop and wait, yes. That's why they were in that high place, praying to the Lord. Let's, let's remember what Jesus had instructed them to do in Acts 1. Let's go to Acts 1, verse 6. When you're there, say, violent wind. Then they gathered around him and asked, this is Acts 1, 6. Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Remember, the disciples said, well, Jesus, you died, you rose again, so now you're going to become a king. And Jesus said to them in verse 7, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has said by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, it is very important for you guys to notice the preposition. Because the Holy Spirit was already where in the disciples at this point? Where was the Holy Spirit in terms of the disciples? Them. Huh? In them. Everybody say in them. In them. <clears throat> Living on the inside. When we come to Jesus... The Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of them. But Jesus was promising something else. Everybody say something else. something else. He said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, covers you, showers you, and then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. And as we already know, the angels said, people, men, why are you looking up? This same Jesus will come back just as you have seen him go up. So Jesus had promised that the power of God that was already living inside of them through the presence of the Holy Spirit was going to come upon them, on them, and give them special powers for them to do what? Be witnesses. Everybody say witnesses. witnesses. It takes a special kind of power to be a Jesus disciple when Jesus is not physically walking on this earth and Jesus knew it. None of us 
would have the ability to walk with God, to love God in the midst of what Jesus called an adulterous and perverse generation. Jesus called that the generation of 2,000 years ago. I can still say that about the generation today. Perverse. Perverse. I don't know if you guys are following the news, but there is a musical icon of many, many years, Bob Diddy, being accused of sexual trafficking. And some of the things that are coming out are perverse, are adulterous. Choose your leaders. Choose who you're going to follow. Because some of them in this world are perverse. And it matters. It matters. And the Lord knew that his disciples would not be able to be witnesses or to even live or walk a Christian life unless the Holy Spirit came upon them with power. Let's go to Matthew 11. Matthew 11. Jesus has just received a visit from the disciples of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist has been thrown in jail because John the Baptist spoke to Herod about something he was doing that was not correct. And his wife, who had been married to his brother, asked her daughter Solomon to dance for him. And she danced for him. And she danced so well that at the end of her dance, Herod said, I will give you up to the half of my kingdom because of the beautiful dance you've done here. And coached by her mother, she said, give me right here the head of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist eventually would die beheaded. But while he was still in prison, he got discouraged. How many of you here have ever gotten discouraged following Christ? All of us, right? This is even worth it. And John gets really sad, really depressed, and he sends his disciples to Jesus. And listen to what John at the Baptist said. Ask him, are you the one that we were waiting for or do we have to wait for someone else? Everybody go, ooh. <clears throat> that is Jesus cousin. And that is the guy that was preparing the way for the Lord. So if you get this courage and you get a little sassy with God, you're going to be okay. John the Baptist asked Jesus, whom he had been preparing the way for, are you the one we were waiting for? Or should we look for somebody else? Because I'm in jail. I'm, I'm rotting here in jail. And you don't seem to be doing anything to help me out. John was discouraged. And Jesus says, tell John, the blinds can see. The mute can talk. People are receiving salvation. Go tell them that. As in, John, there's ample evidence that I'm God. You may not like what you're going through right now, but you should never doubt that I am he who I say I am. And that is God's word for each and every one of us when we're going through trials and tribulations. Hey, in this world, the Lord promised, you will be afflicted, but trust me, I have overcome the world. And by the way, our lives here on this earth is but a minuscule part of the eternal life that we have with Jesus. But following, Jesus sends those disciples back to John saying, tell John what I'm doing and yes, I am God. In Matthew 11, verse 12, he says, this is Jesus talking now. He tells the people a lot of good things about John. And then he says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. The Bible here is recording that entering the kingdom of God and walking in the kingdom of God takes courage, unwavering faith, determination, and endurance. This is why I like to tell you the things as they are because I remember when we were teenagers and we were preaching the gospel, the message was something like, God has a plan for your life and it's wonderful. And if you come to Christ, he will take all your problems and they will go with lies. That's what I said because that's what I was taught. I was a little girl, nine, ten years old. But that's a lie. The Bible promises that those who are going to follow Christ must deny themselves, take the cross, and follow him. 
I don't want to be wonderful women. You better believe it. Particularly when you go to church. Because for me, that is the highlight of my life. Wednesdays and Sundays, I don't have that on my life. And you guys. So there's a lot of good moments, and there, there's laughter, and there's joy. And man, when those moments are here, enjoy them. When you come to church, enjoy it. When you're in prayer, when you're praising God, rejoice. Because then you have to go back there. Among an adult, adulterous and perverse generation. And Jesus is saying here, the kingdom of heaven, of which you and I are citizens, suffers violence. There's violence. In other words, there's opposition. The Bible says in Ephesians that our opposition is not carnal. That person that rocks you the wrong way, that individual that's harassing you, that situation that you're dealing with, the Bible tells us in Ephesians is not against flesh or blood. It's against principalities. It's against authorities of the regions, the spiritual regions, Satan and all his demons are working against the kingdom of God and are working against you. So I love what the word says that when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples on that high place, on that open room, it says that the Holy Spirit came as a, what kind of a wind? Violent wind. As a violent, not just any wind, but as a violent wind, to give us power, to give us anointing, because we need, we need the violent wind of the Holy Spirit to help us, to help us. The Bible says that the Lord has not given us the spirit of timidity or of fear, but of power and boldness. We need that. This is why Jesus told his disciples, wait. Do not go yet. Do not go out and be my witnesses in your own strength. The Holy Spirit is already living inside of you, but you need a special power. You need a special dispensation so that you don't get discouraged. So that you don't get easily defeated. Because the kingdom of heaven will suffer violence, and so you need the powerful wind of my Holy Spirit to come upon you. And there's a lot of Christians nowadays walking not under the power of the Holy Spirit. I do not doubt that they have the Holy Spirit living inside of them. Oh, but they need the Holy Spirit to come upon them and give them power so that we don't walk on this earth as just, just another human. We are different. We have been called to a higher purpose. We walk on this earth, but we don't belong to this earth. We are citizens of a heavenly kingdom, and we are ambassadors of the king of that heavenly kingdom. And we need power. The promise of the Father, that violent wind. Number two, the Holy Spirit is our advocate. He's our defender, and yes, he's our infusion of power. Let's go to John 16. John 16. Starting in verse 1, when you get there, it says, say, violent wind. Okay. Verse 1, John 16. All these I have told you so that you will not what? Exactly. Another word, so that you will not fall away. Jesus talking to his disciples. He's about to go to the cross. And then say, listen to this. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. We will be oppressed. We will go through trials and tribulations. Verse 4. I have told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate, another word for the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, 
He will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because people do not believe in him. About righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. You know, guys, this is an important passage for us to remember when we're trying to be witnesses. I was having this conversation with Ellie the other day. When we try to convict people, it comes through as judgment and accusation. But the Bible says very clearly, Jesus says clearly, that it is the job of the Holy Spirit to convict the world of sin. So what you and I need to be doing is we need to be witnessing to people about the love of Jesus, and then we need to pray the heck out of them. And we need to ask the Holy Spirit to come in power and use anything that we may have shared to convict that person that we love of sin. It is the job of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit does it, he's going to do it well. Then it will be that person's choice to say either yes or no to the Holy Spirit. But don't you try. Because when you and I try to take on the role of the Holy Spirit, it doesn't turn out well because it's not our job and we were not designed to be the Holy Spirit. This is why you will never hear me from the pulpit telling you how you need to dress now that you're a Christian. No. Nope. My job is to connect you with the Holy Spirit of God so that you will learn to hear his voice and he himself will convict you. He will, himself will teach, teach you, will guide you. My job is to pray. Not to assert the role, the role of the Holy Spirit. Verse 12. This is Jesus again to his disciples. I have much more to say to you, more thou that you can bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. I love that. Jesus had more to tell his disciples, but he was going to wait for the spirit to guide them to all truth. And he said, he will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. This is talking about the unity of the Holy Spirit with the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit is not going to come up with his own separate story. No, he will tell you what he's hearing from who? From the Father and the Son. Verse 14, he will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. Jesus is saying the Holy Spirit will take what I give him and will make it known to you. And then he says, all that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So there's Jesus saying, I have received something from the Father. I've given it to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to give it to you. There's the Trinity again, that beautiful Godhead. Let's go back to Acts 2. But we can see the role of the Holy Spirit is our advocate. The one that convicts people of sin our defender, our protector from this world. Acts 2, verse 5. Because now, the Holy Spirit is not only like a violent wind to help us with the opposition of this world, the Holy Spirit is not only our advocate, our defender, He also likes to stir things up. You guys ready? Jason. I want you to grab that thing, come here, and bring, there's milk and there's chocolate syrup inside the refrigerator. So come on, we'll bring it here, and we're going to do an example. All right, Acts 2. I promise you, chocolate milk. We're having chocolate milk today. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, what sound? What sound, guys? The violent wind, yeah. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. And they were utterly what? Amazed. And they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in their language? And then verse 12 says they were amazed and perplexed, asking one another, well, let's do this. Let's do this illustration. So, easy, give me that. So when we come to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us. Uh -huh. 
And as the Holy Spirit is inside of us, yes. He's inside of us, and he's really yummy. He loves us, he loves on us, yes, yes, yes. And he shows us the fun. And it's a beautiful relationship that we have with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was inside of the disciples. They were supposed to wait. And when the Holy Spirit shows up with a mighty wind, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and me to give us power, he does it because we stir him up. Yes. The Holy Spirit was already there. And he was yummy. And he was wonderful. But the Holy Spirit likes to stir us up. Try that at the taste. It's a good chocolate milk taste. Really good chocolate milk. That's what happens when the, the spirit steers it up. And you steer it up too. You pray. You worship. You glorify the Lord. You read the Bible. You get together with other believers. You're steering up. Amen. The power of the Holy Spirit is out of you, and then you can enjoy. His presence. Thank you, Jaycee. Wow. I appreciate it. Everybody give a hand for Jaycee. Just, so just so that you don't think I'm, in, I'm just making stuff up. Go with me to 2 Timothy 1. Because you have to admit, on the, 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 the people were there in the temple. They were worshiping in Pentecost, 50 days after Easter. All these people are God-fearing Jews, but Jesus needed things to be stirred up. And the Bible says that they were amazed. They were bewildered. They were astonished. And they started asking questions. What is this? Aren't these men from here? Why are they speaking in our languages? Why are all these people? What, what's going on? Some were making fun. The Holy Spirit came up with some serious noise, some serious steering up of things. Here's what Paul says in 2 Timothy 1. He says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God in keeping with the promise of life that is Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience, as night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. Ah, there's that constantly prayer. Recalling your tears. Ah, Timothy, a young man that served the Lord. There were tears. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I want to comfort you, Timothy, so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. So Lois and Eunice have done a very good job with Timothy. They have really trained him in the way of the Lord. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flames the gift of God, which is in you through the laying of my hands. And the New King James Version says, I command you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying of my hands. Not only does the Holy Spirit come to stir things up. Before the Holy Spirit can stir things up, you have to stir up His presence in your life. For the Spirit, verse 7, of the Spirit God gives us does not make us timid. It is not God's will for you to be timid. I'm telling you right now. I know, I, I know many people that scream when they're watching a football game. That dance like there's no tomorrow in a party. That are loud and obnoxious in many other atmospheres. But when it comes to God, all of a sudden they're the shyest people on earth. They're timid. Why is that? They can be very vocal. They can be very outspoken. But when it comes to God, they are like da, 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 like spies. Nobody knows. Nobody should have to guess that you are a believer. 
Nobody should have to guess that Jesus is that was for the Spirit of God. It says here, I'm not making it up. Does not make us timid. But gives us power, love, and self-discipline. If you are shy, afraid, ashamed about Jesus, it could be that the chocolate syrup is in your milk. But you haven't stirred it up yet. The Holy Spirit is inside of you, but His power, His power needs to be stirred up in your heart. For the Spirit of God gave us, does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed. Everybody say, do not be ashamed. Do not be ashamed. Of the testimony about our Lord, or of me, His prisoner. Rather join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Now, Timothy was Paul's disciple. He was one of his young pastors. Paul was in chains. I'm sure there was a degree of fear in Timothy. But the apostle Paul says, oh no, Paul, oh no, Timothy. The Lord has not given you a spirit of timidity, but of power. No, 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 no. Raise up, raise up, raise up. Steer up the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. You know how you got that? When I laid hands on you, I prayed for you, and you received that additional feeling, additional power of the Holy Spirit. So Timothy, never be ashamed to tell others about the, the Lord. And never be ashamed of me either, even though I'm in prison for him. Paul is telling Timothy, with the strength God has given you, be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news of the gospel. So here we are, here we stand. In the footsteps of the first disciples of Jesus, here we are standing as disciples of the living God. We are members of the revolution, remember? The revolution of the kingdom of heaven. I worked yesterday. I got up at 6 in the morning, it was a Saturday. I worked until one or two at two, I left. I had to visit several people to tell them about Jesus. To tell them about camp. To share the good news of the gospel. I make time in my schedule every day. Who am I going to share the good news with today? That's because the Lord has given me no spirit of community, but of power and authority in the Holy Spirit. My prayer today is that like a violent wind, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. My prayer is that you will feel the power of the Holy Spirit as your advocate, your defender, and the one who infuses you with power. Not only to walk as a believer, but to walk as an ambassador. See, I can visit another country. And if I visit another country, I'm a tourist. But I be, if I visit that country with the authority of the President of the United States as the ambassador of the United States into that country, I cannot just be in that country as any other tourist. I have to talk to people about my government, about my country, create good relations, build bridges of communication. A lot of believers walk in this world as tourists rather than ambassadors. Oh, we're not staying here. We're going home. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we have received a call to an ambassadorship. We have an official designation as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, as ministers of reconciliation. This is why we need the Holy Spirit to come upon us as a violent wind. We need his infusion of power. And we need to allow the Holy Spirit to stir things up. He is the great disruptor. God wants to disrupt your life. If your life is too organized, if there's not a lot going on, maybe the Holy Spirit is not stirring up. I had a co-worker that told me the other day, and I say all these guys, because the only testimony I can share is my own testimony. I do not do it to like, oh, look how awesome I am. Because you guys know, I'm always confessing to you how screwed up I am. Okay? 
So my 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 intention, the intention of my heart is not to like play me as a wonderful thing because I'm nothing without the Holy Spirit. But I had a co-worker told me the other day, I can't keep up with you. You're what's going on with you? He's like, you have two jobs, you have all these things going on, but man, you are always like. That's what he said. He couldn't put his finger on it. So I put the finger on it for him. I said, well, I serve a living God. And his power is at work in me, in the midst of my witnesses, because I had to admit that I have witnesses. I don't want to take the glory that only belongs to God. People around you need to be bewildered, people. People around you need to be confused. Going on with Ellie. Why has she changed? Why has she changed so much? That's what happened to people in the book of Acts. When the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, they had to notice. That's why the Holy Spirit did that big entrance. They had to know something dramatic was changing, and from that moment on, the revolution was in full force. The Lord wants you and me to be revolutionaries. And we can only do that with the power of the Holy Spirit. Stir up that chocolate syrup in your milk. Do not be content. Because that milk is not going to taste as chocolate milk until you stir it up. And the power of the Holy Spirit on you, you will not be an effective witness. Until the power of the Holy Spirit is in full force in you. Yes, he is in you. But he wants to be more than just in you. He wants to be upon you. And he wants to give you power to walk not only in personal victory, but as a witness. In every area of your life, you can be a witness. You don't have to hit people with the Bible in their head. You don't have to tell them they're sinners. But if the Holy Spirit comes upon you like a violent wind, I guarantee you the way you live your life and the way you communicate with others will put a big light on you. And then you can take that light and focus it onto the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the promise of our Father who loves us. He's a gift to us. He's like a violent wind if we allow him. He will move violently in our lives and he will help us. He's also our advocate. He's also our defender and he is ready to infuse us with power. Remember though, he is a gentleman. If when you pray, you're like, the Bible says, open your mouth that I may feel it. If you resist him, he's not going to steer it up. He's powering you. We need to be open. That's why we sing that song. Come and take your place. Right here, this is your home. What happens when you get to your home? You take off your shoes. You're comfortable. You do things in your home that you won't do anything else. Does the Spirit of God feel at home in you? Can He do anything He wants in you? Or do you have him in a little separate room? And pull him out, maybe, for church services. Does the Spirit feel at home in you? The Holy Spirit is about to, is, is ready to stir things up in your life. He wants to stir things up in your life so that you can stir up the world around you. There are friends of yours that badly need you to be stirred up. There are co-workers, business associates, classmates. They need you to be stirred up. They don't know it, but they need you to be stirred up because your God, the God that lives inside of you, is their only hope of changing the course of their lives. But if the Holy Spirit is not stirred up inside of you, you're going to be full of timidity and fear. You're going to feel no motivation whatsoever because you're going to be like, oh, I don't want to be rejected. 
Oh, what, if, what if I invite them and they say no and then they don't talk? That spirit of timidity right there. Don't let the syrup fall to the bottom of your milk. Stir it up. The Holy Spirit wants to stir it up in your life so that you may stir up the world around you. Let's pray. Beautiful Lord and Savior, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the promise of the Father that the Spirit is not only to live inside of us, but He is to come upon us with power like a mighty, violent wind to help us because the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and only those of us that are walking in the full power of your Holy Spirit will take it by force. Father, give us the power, the desire, the openness, to allow your Holy Spirit to be at home within us. To do what he wants, whatever it is that he wants. Open those of us that are close to your work. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this church. And you are welcome in our hearts. You are welcome in my life. Us up. Take your place. Don't leave in your room, in my heart. No, no, no. Take it over. Father, I pray that you will start pouring your power over this church through dreams, visions, miracles. Different tongues, tongues of fire. That when we will feel the power of your Holy Spirit, we won't resist it. That we will have an attitude of mind, heart, and emotion of openness to your work, to your mighty presence and power. Help us, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Make that your prayer. Holy Spirit, come. Come and have your way in me. Come and have your way in me. Holy Spirit, come and take full control of me. Change my life. Stir me up. I don't want to be just another bland Christian. I want to be one that walks in your power. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, Father. We love you. Let's stay in prayer. In Jesus' name.